This is Weekend Edition. I'm Scott Simon. Coming up, a country concert in our studio. Maggie Lewis, hers is that thrilling West Texas trill of a voice you hear singing about honky-tonk women, and Tillman Franks, the bass player and record producer, came by for a talk this week. Thank goodness they brought along their instruments and their sidemen. Margaret Lewis is a special friend of this program. She's been on before to talk about her days as a singer on the old Louisiana Hayride radio show that used to beam out of Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> Margaret Lewis, Tillman Franks, and a group they formed for the occasion, the old-time Louisiana Hayride Band, are in Washington, D.C. this weekend as part of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, a 10-day stand that will further fix the place of the Louisiana Hayride in music history. From the post-war 1940s until 1958, the weekly live radio show from Shreveport helped remake American country music from a regional specialty into a national voice. Everybody who wanted to be in the business came there to try to get started. And since Shreveport had such people in the business like Tillman Franks and Johnny Horton, they were producing the show right there from Shreveport every Saturday night. So they would give the new talent a chance to be on. So therefore, they discovered a lot of new talent. At the same time, of course, there was Nashville's Grand Ole Opry. But the Opry in those days seemed to conduct itself as a kind of a high church of country music, insisting on a degree of authenticity and acoustic string tradition that turned away the musicians who wanted to bring electricity and flashes of blues and soul into country music. Hank Williams came down from Alabama in 1948 and made his breakthrough at the Louisiana Hayride. Tillman Franks, who helped book him and played bass alongside him, today passes out photographs of the poet laureate of country music wearing his first Western suit, a double-breasted, wide-shouldered, shiny-finned Cadillac of a suit that Tillman Franks gave to him. George Jones and Johnny Cash played the Hayride before the Opry would book them. Margaret Lewis won a Hayride talent search contest in West Texas that brought her to Shreveport. And then, of course, there was Elvis Presley. He was a 19-year-old boy with a duckbill haircut and a demo record of an old Big Mama Thornton hit when Tillman Franks first heard his music and phoned a disc jockey friend in Memphis to ask, who is that black kid? Elvis Presley's live appearances on the Louisiana Hayride began to make him a national sensation. The curled lip and twitching hips, the shrieking and swooning among White Sox young women in the audience. Tillman Frank's partner for many years at the Louisiana Hayride was a singer whose career he managed and whose hits he helped to write, Johnny Horton, best remembered for story songs, including The Battle of New Orleans and North to Alaska. Mr. Franks was with Johnny Horton when he began his career in ramshackle roadhouses, and he was with him at the very end in the front seat next to Johnny Horton as they drove back from a late-night stand and their car was struck head-on by a drunk driver, killing Johnny Horton. 
we asked the group who came to our studios to perform Johnny Horton's classic about American independence on this holiday weekend. One, two, three. In 1814, we took a little trip Along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi We took a little bacon and we took a little beans And we caught the bloody British in the town of New Orleans We fired our guns and the British kept a-coming There wasn't as many as there was a while ago We fired once more and they began to run Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico We looked down the river and we seen the British come There must have been a hundred of them beating on the drum they stepped so high and the made the bugles ring We stood beside our cotton field and didn't say a thing We fired our guns and the British kept a-coming There wasn't as many as there was a while ago We fired once more and they began to run On down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Oh, Hickory said we could take them by surprise If we didn't fire a musket till we looked them in the eyes We held our fire till we see the faith as well We opened up the squirrel guns and really gave them well Kenny Bill Stinson and Maggie Lewis on vocals. When the Louisiana Hayride went off the air in 1958, much of the talent that was first heard in Shreveport drove north to Nashville. But Tillman Frank stayed. He and Maggie Lewis are now trying to raise the money to restore the Hayride Theater and at least a little of Shreveport's centrality in the world of country music. I've been told if you put a thumbtack in Shreveport and then drew an arc 100, 150 miles around, which is to say maybe yeah. a couple of hours in the car, <laughs> you would find the birthplaces or residences of most of the major country talents. Of that that, well, you could call it the magic circle from Bernard Downhart that was born in Jefferson, Texas, which is about 25 miles from Shreveport. Mm -hmm. Gene Austin from Minden had the first My Blue Heaven. Leadbelly, That's right. Huddy Leadbetter in Morning Sport. Mm -hmm. Boy, that covered the first three great ones. I know you can you can add a hundred more names. Yeah, but those are far down the road to Elvis and Johnny Cash yeah. and Jimmy Rogers. Boy, that covers them, don't it? It sure does. <laughs> yeah. And Johnny Horton was just right there in East Texas. Yeah. Tex Ritter was uh, born in Carthage, Panola. And, of course, Conway Twitty, not far from there, and Johnny Cash and Glenn Campbell. Yeah. I could name, ooh, look how many we We're can going name. going now, yeah. And, I could name and 15 you know, or 20 of them. Uh, and Buddy Holly came to Shreveport yeah. and tried to get on the hayride. Hay he couldn't get on the hayride? Well, he had talked to Elvis, and yeah. Elvis told him to come to Shreveport, and he'd get him on, but... Elvis wasn't there that Saturday night, but they drove all the way trying to get there. They drove all the way from West Texas from, uh, to Shreveport, to and Shreveport. they couldn't. Oh, mercy. But what the Shreveport. Hayride had that, that I think that maybe the Opry lacked mm -hmm. was this excitement uh, that, that the musicians had of all being there together. It's mm -hmm. like a family, community. We all knew each other, and we, we all played songs together and enjoyed being it. It was just a real developing ground. The other night, dear, as I lay sleeping, I dreamed I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and I cried. Maggie Lewis, who also plays guitar, and Tillman Franks on the acoustic bass. They were joined in our studios by Paul Griffith on drums, John Peck on fiddle, 
and Kenny Bill Stinson on piano and guitar. The entire Old Time Louisiana Hayride Band is performing at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival on the Mall in Washington, D.C. this week. And this is NPR's Weekend Edition, directed this week by our own Honky Talk Angels, Alice Winkler and Tish Falva, and the Oklahoma haymaker himself, Doug Mitchell. Our production staff includes Ken Hom, Peter Breslow, Sarah Byer, Kelly, Roy Hodges, Gloria Cheng, and Jill Steinkirchner. Our technical director is Kevin Langley, engineer Steve Brown, Renee Pringle, Saraya Muhammad, Guy Knapper, Ileana Arnold, and John Carrillo, who recorded the Louisiana Hayride Band in our studios. Our research librarians are Country Kimbaleski and the Virginia Vagabond, Alphonse Veen. Barbara Reem is our assistant managing editor. Martha Ann Overland edited our program today. And the senior producer of Weekend Edition Saturday is Cindy Carvey. And B.J. Litterman composed our theme. I'm Scott Simon. <laughs>